What's up everybody, thank you for joining me today in the studio. In 2013, BMW released the R9T. It was the first retro future bike to come from the brand. And it has me and had me wondering, where did it come from? Why that bike, why the name, why the look? So I did some research, did some digging, and history usually isn't the most interesting thing, but it is when it relates to motorcycles. So let's find out what this thing's all about. This story begins in 1967. BMW is producing the R60. It's a bike that looks like it's from World War II and is using technology from about the same time period. Imagine you and I would go to a dealership today and we're looking at a brand new CBR1000 or a brand new Suzuki Shrad, 20 year old technology. Which one are we going to buy, right? Come on. So you can imagine that in 1967, BMW sales weren't so hot, but things started to change in 1969. This is when they moved their motorcycle manufacturing plant from a shared plant with their automotive division in Munich to their own specific motorcycle division manufacturing plant in Berlin, right? And it was the same year, 1969, that they released the five series. And that was the R50, the R60, and the R75. So these bikes featured updated performance using learnings from their automotive division and updated aesthetics. So this five series really brought BMW at least up to par, right? And started getting them a little bit of uh, confidence and a a positive reputation in the marketplace. But it wasn't until 1973 that BMW really broke away from the pack and started to truly lead, right? And that was when they released the R90. And not only did they release the R90, they also released the R90 S. The R90S used hotter cams, uh, higher compression pistons, and 38 millimeter carburetor. So they're getting a ton of airflow and better in fuel and better performance with the R90S. The R90S was designed by this guy, Hans Muth, who is a legend in the motorcycle design field, right? He designed the R90S, the R80GS, the R65, and the very first Suzuki Katana. Dude's got a serious record, right? But one of the things that he was really focusing on with the R series and throughout his career is this idea of modularity, right? The ability to use similar platforms and engines and components across multiple vehicles, multiple lines. By by doing this, you reduce the cost and you make the bikes more accessible to a larger number of people. So when you look at the new R9T, you'll see that they're highly customizable. There's a lot of modularity that's built in. That's inspired by this original R90 and R90S. But the R90S wasn't just modular. It didn't just look the part with its bikini front fairing and updated tail section. It also performed. It had a top speed of 124 miles an hour crack the quarter mile in 13 and a half seconds, which is fast in a car by today's standards. It went from zero to 60 in about 4.8 seconds. In 1976, BMW won the very first AMA Superbike Championship with an R90S. This was a Superbike for its time. Now, in 1980, BMW released the R80GS, which opened the door to this adventure market that's huge for BMW today. So fast forward again to 2013, BMW released the R9T Roadster and the R9T Urban GS, which were both inspired by bikes that were designed by Hans Muth, this guy, the legend that we talked about, and that cemented and reestablished BMW in the motorcycle market in the 70s and early 80s. So I hope that now we have a better understanding of where the R9T came from, why it's important, and hope we have a little bit more appreciation for the thought that went into the new bikes and, and into the original bikes. And listen, if you found any value here today, if you learned something, drop a like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the studio next time. Take care.
sun's about to go down. So what you do?